Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. everyone. I have the privilege of being with Raina. She is a bereaved mother and she lives in Southern California. And we are pleased that she's here to speak with us today about the death of her son, Josiah. I'm Mary Mack. I'm with the Mary Mack Show. And I am doing a bereavement mother, excuse me, a bereaved mother's podcast series to help everyone better understand all the nuances of grief that go on after you've lost a child. And so I want to say welcome, Raina. Thank you. Uh, So glad for you to be here. And I appreciate your taking the time today to talk about Josiah. Josiah was 20 when he was diagnosed Uh, with cancer. He died at age 29, but unfortunately not from the cancer. It was a very strange motorcycle accident that actually took his life. And also she is married to her husband, Richard. She has two other children, Valerie and Jeremy. And both of them were in their thirties when Josiah was uh, diagnosed and in their late thirties when he passed on. So again, thank you, Raina, for being with us. And I'm grateful that you're going to tell us your story and how grief has affected you and how you've coped with all of this. So thank please. you. Well, the, my kids are in their late 30s now. They were yes. in their early 30s when he was diagnosed. And I mean, uh, when he left this planet and in their 20s when he was diagnosed. Oh, but, I yeah, apologize. Yeah. So, okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I was like, it's going to make me way older. <laughs> so I'm getting there as it is. So um, thank you for having me. Um, so tell me, um, you know, this is a, you know, they say this is a club and I, I don't like that word at all. It's oh no, club. I don't either. Don't join. <laughs> I don't, it's not a club we want to be involved with, right? Right. But, you know, the, you know, and I'm like, well, I didn't volunteer for this, but, you know, um, I ended up um, after Josiah left this planet, um, writing, uh, writing became one of the things that um, became such a healing uh, tool for me and um, ended it turned into a full on book, you know, over it. Like, I just didn't even know, like, that was going to happen. But in my writings, what I had, what I began to find as I was writing and, and, and somewhat channeling information from him was I kind of did sign up for it because, you know, he's been with me forever. Like, uh, and he knew he was going to be here for a shorter amount of time. And, and, um, he like said, Hey, will you be my mom? And so I have this whole dialogue that goes on and, and I, you know, he caught me in some weird, you know esoteric moment where I said yes <laughs> and and um and somehow knowing that or or believing that helps me to um say this is like part of also my journey and what I need for my soul's growth because you know he's still here 
he was he was pure spirit he was pure light he's pure love and and if that's what we all are truly then that's what he still is you know so um that's uh, that's just some of the stuff that that helps me to to one of the storylines <laughs> that I twist around to, to make it seem um copable manageable you know um mm-hmm. a child going to spirit is is unimaginable and emotionally reckless in in a mother's world in a father's world um and it just it it creates i, I can't even i can't even like it's hard to even describe what happens to your heart <laughs> in that moment and it it is so shattered and it's just so and and anytime someone goes to spirit but there's something about a child that that is just that's just it's so intense um so Josiah is my youngest of three mm-hmm. biological children and um and the funniest of of he was just a funny kid you know <laughs> and um that humor took him into the circus arts and he loved performing in fact this this round thing behind me the circle is his sir wheel that he would spin around like a penny in and um just he loved to perform he loved to to make people laugh and to uh he just he he was a Leo. He liked to be in the limelight, you know. And, <laughs> and but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't arrogant or you know. Uh, he, he just he just it just it was part of him. It was like as soon as he was about, I want to say he was like twelve or thirteen when we he we went to the circus in Redlands. There's a um the Y Circus, and he was like, that's what I got to do. And, <laughs> and, and I was like, okay, let's let's figure this out, and he as soon as he that was it he his his creative juices were turned on and 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 he was in his element so he started that really young and then he worked at like the um San Diego Zoo he worked at Disneyland I mean all the the fun jobs um that a kid wants to to do and um you know really thriving he had gone to college and he was a, you know, Orange County yuppie, you know, in some respects, studying theater design. And, and, um, he had come out here to his older brother's son's birthday party and he was performing And one of his acts that he performed, which is not mother didn't love it, was he liked to breathe fire. And this oh. was just a side thing. And I was, it, he was, it was cool, but I just, it never felt good to me. Like, I don't think you should be doing this. What if you burn yourself, you know? So it was, um, it was August, um, the, I want to say 17th. And he had um, done this performance and then his birthday is the 19th. So him and I, after that birthday party, went to the movies and uh, I re- I'll never watch this movie again. Batman, the Joker, the one with the Joker in it. Oh, and um, I think it was that one. And and um, and he was coughing a lot. And I said, "Stay with me," you know. And he's like, "No, I'm gonna go home." Well, when he got home, he still just couldn't catch his breath well. And so he um, he called me, and he called me again. It was close to midnight, and I said, "Just go to the hospital." And at that time I was, I was single. I lived alone and, um, I didn't, I'm, I mean, I was an esthetician. So there was like, you don't have insurance usually when you're in the, the esthetician hair, you know, stuff like that. So it's just at that time I didn't have any insurance. And so he was like, we don't have insurance. I'm like, you know, I don't care. I don't care. It costs a million dollars. I'll pay it. <laughs> you know, I said, just go. And so he, got in his car and he said, I said, he goes, okay, I'm going. And I'm like, by yourself. And he's like, yeah. And I go, no, go back up and, you know, get one of your friend, roommates. He lived with three guys. And so um, they went and about three 20 in the morning, he called me and said that, you know, again, cause he funny, you know, you want the good news or the bad news. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, serious. It's three in the morning. Like what's going on. Right. So, uh, they had x-rayed him and found a mass in his chest. Oh wow. And uh so I said, okay, I'll, 
he said, you've got to come out, you know, in the morning, we've, we've got to go to, to a doctor. And I said, oh, okay, you know, like, just get some sleep. Like, you know, mommy does. Of course, like, you know, I cried myself to sleep because I like, how, how do you function, you know, after that? After you get that news, yes. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, without, you know, telling all the details, but all they're all in the book. <laughs> um, I called his father in the morning and we drove out there and the doctor was like, well, he either needs surgery or an oncologist. And I was like, okay, he's speaking some sort of foreign language to me right now because they were, they're just going to take that thing out of his body. Well, that's not what happened. So uh, he had um, stage two Hodgkin's lymphoma diagnosed. And in that moment, he became, went from a, you know, Orange County yuppie to a full blown down to the earth and up to the heaven hippie. And he decided he did not want to do Western medicine. And he was going to seek out all the healing arts he could. Okay. Um, and I was already, you know, I was already doing that myself as a Reiki uh, master and 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 things that I was already doing. So he just kind of came through, you know, and he's like, OK, I'm going this way. And um, he just started traveling around and looking for different modalities of healing, different herbs, different uh, foods. You know, he became a vegan and, um, well, he was a raw vegan for a while, but, and then he became, you know, he just really said, okay, like this can, I can heal myself. Uh, you know, I have, the, I have not, he had the power, but there is power in our bodies to heal yes. themselves. And so if our bodies can heal themselves, then, I can figure this out. And how can I figure this out? So that was his question. And then he became a holistic health practitioner and, um, you know, just dove into to all the different ways to heal, um, became a uh, healing woodworker, which I have right behind me is one of them that he said. And, um, and he just, And then um, we did this for nine years Um, and for him, it was an adventure for me. It was, um, kind of scary, but yet I was kind of in awe of him, you know, because he was living his best life. He was living fully and, you know, taking in whatever he could, um, uh, body, mind, body, spirit, and um, traveling. He, you know, he moved to Hawaii, and then he, you know, came back from Hawaii, and he moved. You know, he lived in Portland, and he, like, he just really was looking for, for, you know, what was, what was his sole purpose, and mm-hmm. what was he doing? And so, it was quite, quite magical to watch. You know, and then he'd call me up, and he'd go. Mom, listen, you know, I can play the flute now. <laughs> he just, like he just like got it, you know, like he just played the flute now. And and um it was really kind of cool like to watch him. Um to watch him do all that. Um what else? Um do you think that uh I I was just curious, do you think that his um looking for all type of uh natural and alternative medicines actually elongated his life. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I f- yeah, I do because I mean, I'm not, I, I would never tell someone, oh, don't do chemo. Like right. that's not, that's not my position. And uh, you know, I do believe if you're going to do something holistically that you should need to balance it and at least know what's going on in your blood, know what's going on with yourself and, and you know, and, and, you know, you know, healing is intentional and all healing is intentional. So you need to be aware. Um, but you don't know, had he done chemo, if he would have got a secondary cancer and then had to do chemo again and it weakened his body. And then he left at 29. I, I don't know because we don't know. So yeah. that's, you know, I, I had to honor his path. He was a, you know, young man and an adult. And I mean, you know, he taught me a tremendous amount 
about myself even in that time frame you know so yes definitely um his definitely i i find that so amazing you know what he actually did for himself he just made up his mind like i'm not going to succumb and die i'm going to do whatever it takes he really did and and we never said you have cancer and i'm i'm actually a big believer of not doing that any what no regardless you know even sometimes i have a headache it's more like you know I, the headache is upon me or something like no you know, I, know, like, I know what you mean you didn't want to label yourself. him that way yes we never labeled him you know it was a diagnosis you know of um he uh you know sometimes I'm like are you in denial and he's like no I'm not in denial mom I've got it I've, I'm, I've got this handle and I was like okay like um he didn't want me to tell him what to do but he definitely wanted my advice so he would call me and ask me about different herbs and essential oils and um, protocols. And, you know, even since he's left, I've learned more. And I'm like, darn it, you know, like if I had known this, I could have told him that, you know, but we're, it, you know, everything evolves. So, um, but he was, he, yeah, he really, he really had his own mind. I mean, all my children do. And, and I mean, that's what we want, right? We want our children to to grow up and, yes. and to, to decide what's best for them. And yeah, absolutely. And, and I we don't always know if we agree with it or not, or if we think it's right or wrong or, you know, but that's the whole, probably the biggest lesson is, is to surrender to someone else's needs versus your own, you know, as if I had it my way. I can't tell you that I would have told him to do chemotherapy. I wasn't that comfortable with that storyline either. So, um, but had he done it, I would have supported it all the way. So, you know, um, I, I just think it's really, he's, he was really fascinating. And he, he taught me a lot, you know, he called me and, you know, anything he learned, I had to learn and I had to know right away. You know, so. <laughs> so he taught me a lot, you know, of things I didn't already know because you know, as a young mind, he was, he was learning more rapidly than I do, you know, and, and, and he was diving into stuff. He, he actually, because in the beginning I was like looking up different things for, for his diagnosis and he would call me and I thought, oh my gosh, he's doing it himself. Like I, I don't have to do this to that extent because he's miles ahead of me. I'm going to be running behind him telling him stuff he already knows. Right. So, uh, it was, it was really, it was, it was, you know, as I look back now, you know, I mean, when you're in it, you're like, where are you at now? What are you doing? No, you have to have a cell phone. I have to go to get a hold of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so he had been down here in the ninth year, summer and, um, and, you know, there was times where it, it, it cancer would definitely rear its ugly head. Or the diagnosis with your ugly head. And that last summer he um he came down and and he had um we had just actually moved into this house and he uh was struggling. His body was struggling and it was frightening. And um he we we teased because his dad lives a couple hours away, so he lived like in between the two of us again. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so we were to share custody again at a 29 year old. And um, <laughs> actually, I think it was about 28 because he turned 29 that summer. And um, he got on some protocol and, and this and that and herbs and the way he was going to eat. And he, he healed whatever was going on. Wow. And in the midst of that, he... Uh, got a job interview. He lived in Santa Cruz at the time, and he, but he, you know, he was here, and he got a job interview um, for Apple Computer as an on on um on site massage therapist, which is like he said it's it's the job for a massage therapist because it's such steady money, and you know, like it's it's, and I was like, okay, and he's like, so I'm gonna fly up there, and I'm like, um, what, like. 
this has just been the roughest part, you know. It, so he flew up there and he got that job. Wow. And they did not see the frailty of this kid and what he'd been through. I could see it. I knew my child. And I was, he called me and he said, I got the job. And I, and all, all I could say is I, you're, you're magical. Like you are literally, they just saw his light because he was such a cool kid. I mean, he was really, really a cool person. And, um, so he said, I'm going to go back home. And I was like, Oh no, like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not ready, <laughs> but he was ready to go back to life. And, um, so I drove back up there with him. I said, I'm going to go with you. So we drove up there together and I spent uh, several days there and, and I took the train home and um, that was the last time I saw him. Um, no, that's not true. That was the last time I was there. And then um, he came back in September because he wanted to show us that he was doing well. He's like, I'm coming to show you. I'm not going to just tell you, I'm going to show you. So he flew to his father's and then um, came up to me and to show me <laughs> because, uh, you know, moms are neurotic and moms need to see. <laughs> moms need to see. And, um, and then I took him to the airport. So we went to Sprouts to get him some snacks and, um, and then I took him to the airport. So that was in sep- the end of September. And in October, um, he got borrowed one of his friend's motorcycles and there was no bun around, not a soul. And he was up in the mountains of Santa Cruz and the motorcycle hit a tree. And then I got, I, you know, I got a phone call. So, and like uh, you had said earlier, you know, I, I had the concern of what I call the sea monster, like capital C monster, uh, taking him from me. You know, it's it's present even when you see them healing. It's it's present. Um, it's an undercurrent. And but that last summer, it really like I thought, what are you, doing? you know, like what's happening? And and then okay, you're healed. Okay, you healed your body again. Like, gosh, you just you never cease to blow my mind. And then he went to the tree and the irony of Josiah is um, he was very much, they called him the elf alchemist, you know, elves huh? live in the forest and in the trees. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he, and, and when I went through so many of his writings, I have all his writings and his, his drawings, he had dr- uh, made so many trees and, and, you know, sketch trees and painted trees and, and just a lot of trees. And of course you can see the tree he made me right behind me. It's very ironic, isn't it? He became, he went back to the tree, you know? And, and, and so, you know, I, I, I literally got a vision of him one day just turning and it was to the left. And I, I don't know why it was to the left, but it, he was on the motorcycle. He was looked to the left and, and he saw what I call the translucent door. And he saw the most beautiful uh, ocean and and the mountains and the, the valleys and everything that was was you know spiritual. And of course, he wanted to go that way. And when he went that way, the motorcycle went straight into the tree. So you know, he went back to the you know to spirit. So um, that sounds really you know magical and everything, but it it took me a while to get to that place you know especially since you had gone through so much with him with you know his illness for like nine years nine years nine years and we we kind of celebrated in some respects on the 17th is when he got sick and we we just that was the day of the diagno- d- diagnosis in our minds and and uh every year i would write him something about it and one year one year two year three you know and um you know we made it to year nine it's funny because there's a lot of nines josiah's the 19 his birth is the 19 and um uh, mine is the 29th. I was born in like 59. You know, we 
we have a lot of nine cycles in our in our life and it's so it's a really interesting the nine energy right there but um yeah it was i had just come back from my husband's daughter's like the day after the wedding and then we all got together she uh-huh. just got married and um one of his friends wrote me on facebook reina you know what's your phone number and i just looked at rich and i said something's wrong he goes you don't know that i go something is wrong <laughs> and and um since she told me he took a spill on his motorcycle and he was at the hospital and i was like Mm-mm, no no because at the um at the earlier that day i had felt the energy but didn't know it because I was having so much anxiety because I hadn't talked to him in several days because of all the wedding stuff that was going on. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to talk to him and it was a little unusual. So I was having a lot of, I've got to talk to Josiah. When can we go? I've got to go Josiah, Josiah. So I really feel like his body, like his spirit came and said, mom, hello, I'm here. I'm here now. And, um, but there were so many people around me that, I, um, it was a different, and like, I just felt it more, more of like a, I, I don't know, anxiety is the best. I don't know if it's the right description, but it kind of fits right now. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then they just, uh, so I called the hospital, they put me on hold, got disconnected, called the hospital, put me on hold, got disconnected, called the hospital. I think it was the third time where I was like, don't put me on hold. Like I was like, right. Hold at that point. right. Don't put me on hold. Like, you keep connecting me. Like I, I can't handle it. My son's like, well, so she didn't, she said, I'm going to get the doctor and the doctor, whatever he said, because Richard was standing behind me. And I just like lifted my fo- the phone like that behind her. As soon as he told me that he was go- like, I just gave him the phone and I walked outside and I started screaming, where are you? Josiah, where are you? Cause there is no way I'm doing this without you you better tell me where you are right now. Like right now, I got to know. And, um, and then that became my quest. Where are you? Where are, how am I going to find you? Because that's, if that's just, it had to be in my heart and soul. I have to know that you are still with me and that I can communicate with you. And I couldn't write anything, you know, really except love letters to him the first pretty much close to a year. But um, I was bullet point on a piece of paper I like just had and something would happen and I'd go and then something would happen. I'd write it down and I'd write it down and I'd write it down. There was a full pages of things one after another. Wow. That were going on. And um, right before the, the, one year mark a friend of mine said hey there's this compilation book on gratitude do you want to write in it and um I said no and she goes well you were upset because you missed the last two and I said yeah but that was like on angels and like things like that you know and I said uh this is on gratitude and like if you want me to talk about pain and sorrow yeah I'm your girl. I'm there. <laughs> gratitude. I'm there. I'm not at the gratitude yeah. yet. <laughs> and um, and then I, you know, I was like, well, you can be grateful. Like, Raina, you do have gratitude. And she goes, Raina, just do it. Like, and she's like, sugar-coatedly said, you got this. Just, just do it. So I signed up for it, not even ha- knowing what I would write. And um, it's the beginning. It's like the prefix of this, the book. So I stuck it in my own personal book. And it was called uh, Polish Through the Pain. And literally what was coming out of me, I was dumbfounded. And even halfway through it, I stopped myself and I went, um, this is way too heavy. Like, I can't do this, Josiah. Like, you've got to give me something else. Well, I have a box of writings over the, my lifetime of writing. So I go, I got to go find something else to trigger something else. So Josiah had already been leaving me dimes everywhere. And so I go 
into this box. I go and I had to go find the box because remember we had moved. So I hadn't even looked at this box. I probably haven't even really looked at that box for like several years. Mm-hmm. So I go, I have to go find the box. I bring it in my room. <laughs> I, I lift it up. I'm looking, I'm going from pick, you know, page to page, like what's going to trigger something. I get to the bottom of the box and there's a dime in the bottom of the box. A dime as in a coin? A dime, yes. And I was like, and I had already had this a lot of dime things happening. So I already knew that's a sign. And I was like, well, first of all, how did a dime get in the bottom of that box? That's insane. That's crazy. Like, how's a box? So I go, okay. And I just put it back down and I go, I'll continue writing. And I finished this, this work that has become you know, kind of well-known, like, cause it was just such a beautiful piece that, uh, so I, you know, I published that. And then, uh, shortly after that, um, I was having coffee and I was sitting on the floor and just drinking coffee in the morning. And I heard, um, form, do I have to become form? I like it here. Why must I go there? And I was like, where in the world is your brain at? <laughs> and I, and, um, and then I kind of heard like a dialogue back. And so I got up and I just wrote it down. And as I was writing it, it was like a dialogue between Josiah. And I just ended up calling him or her the ethereal. And basically Josiah was saying, I don't want to go to earth. Like, I don't want to go back there. And the ethereal saying like, you know, you, you, you got things to do and it's going to be a short time, but you know, your mom's waiting for you. And as soon as he realized his mom was me, of course he wanted to come. And then, you know, the next thing, you know, I was pregnant. And so then I go into the birth, but, um, so I called since I was now in this compilation book, I was privy to, um, different authors and, and, um, publishers and one publisher that had been working with our book. And so I thought, I could just hear him tell me, I was like, literally right here, you know, like call Shanda. And I was like, she's going to think I am a crazy person to want to, you know, write about this. And I hadn't, but nothing was really on paper. And so I called her uh, and she's like, this is amazing. This is amazing. And I go, "I, I don't know. Let me think about it. You know, like, and then I could just like, I, I said, I'll get back to you like in a month. And you just back a day later, I think I called her and I said, okay, I'm in. Like, so I hired her and, and she helped me through the process. And it still took me a couple of years. I go, I don't know what to do. And she goes, write the stories. <laughs> yeah. And so she just said, get that piece of paper with those bullet points and start writing the story. And so I just went and just started writing the stories and the stories and the stories and the stories. And then the stories were happening because remember, I'm only at one year. So at one year, you're still thick. You're, you're, you're in the infancy of this. You yes. barely, you know, like, <laughs> and so I was writing in not only uh, the back, kind of like what happened the first year, but then I was writing um, about what was happening. Like this, just, you know, I went to Disneyland with my daughter and, and that story. And then this story, and then she'd say, um, you need to, I wrote about his birth. And then I wrote about, um, I interviewed some of his friends and wrote about his, you know, his adult journey a little bit. And then, um, she's like, you got to write about his childhood. You've got his birth to his diagnosis. What happened in between? And I go, Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So then I'm like, um, uh, okay. So let me get some pictures out because I didn't have any memories. Like I was, uh, like and so I pulled all these pictures out and I I've got them all around me and then I'm hysterical and I can't you know like I I I can't think straight and you know um like literally did my memories leave when he did you know like it took me a minute to gather my energy so I wrote about that and and because it's so relatable like you guys know what happens we get real brain foggy you can't remember stuff I mean grief has a you know I call her she she has her own identity she lives she resides <laughs> within me you know like she's a part of me and when she comes in you know you can get real hazy and fuzzy and forgetful and 
Um, and, and that's okay. You know? Um, so, so, and, and then at two years I had, um, two of the, some of the biggest signs I had ever had. And, um, I had a dream and after that dream, I, I got up and I, and I wrote the dream out and, and as I'm writing, you know, it's like, I'm having conversation with him and I'm like, is this, am I, is this, the, is, am I done with the book? Like, is this, you know, like, and I realized that I'm actually, you know, is there some point you have to stop, stop and yeah. I realized I'm done. Like he had shown me I was, I was actually done. And so it was just, it was just a journey. So. And how, what else? how you've been coping besides he- hearing from him and, and developing it all on paper, how have you personally been coping with it? You know, um, within that time frame, I developed a group and, um, that they showed me to have. And, um, but, you know, I, I think, I think what I've learned is that there's no right, there's no wrong. And I cope with it as I need to. And, and I say that real, real honesty, there's times I don't want to do anything and I don't. And there's times I want to do everything and I do. And, um, I, I think it's honoring the process of, of, you know, you're not, you just are where you are. And there's days that are harder and more painful. Um, there's, there's days where I'm, I mean, I, you know, I have found joy again, I, I you know, um, because I don't, I don't necessarily think time is a healer. I think time gives you enough distance and enough other things that have happened to, to, to bring healing and to bring some sort of, um, um, peace, you know, um, it sucks and I miss him. And of course I know you all understand this. I try to stay connected to other mothers. Um, I find that I do have friends, of course, you know, longtime friends that, that, that some don't don't even have children and, and some have many children and, and they're wonderful supports, but there's something about the bereaved mother that is really a, a beautiful connection. And I realize when I have maybe a few weeks have gone by and I'm, I'm just busy. And, and if I hop onto something or, or I'll create, I have a healing through writing workshop and I, and I, for the sacred mothers is they call them sacred mamas that you are, we all are. And, and we get together and we, and we write and we talk. There's it's, it's a, it's a great camaraderie of energy that, Oh yeah, I see you. Mm-hmm. I know you, I am you. And and I and I got the chills when I just said that, like because it's just so powerful. Um, and I have a lot of grandchildren, so that is very helpful for me. I feel very fortunate um, to uh, to be with them. I, some of them are teenagers now, and uh, the ten year old spends a lot of time with me, and he's very funny. And my daughter has um, just she had two more babies since then. And so that's, um, you know, you know, just wrap yourself up in that, you know? So, um, so that's, that's been good. My, my children are, we're very close. So that's helpful. Um, Richard has been an amazing support, uh, how he has handled me. I don't know. So, um, it's a lot, it's a lot, uh, to deal with, but, but I think coping and healing is, it's um, it's not one thing you do, but it's everything you do, and so you you need to look at everything. And if today you want to be a painter, you paint. And if that's you're done with painting, then you, you know, you write. You don't want to write. You you plant some flowers. You don't want to plant flowers. You want net, net you know, watch TV, watch Netflix, get in get in a show that lose, you lose yourself in. You read a book you take a walk. You, I try, I do exercise. I mean, I feel like it's really important. I will tell you this, that, um, that you take care of yourself and that you find, um, you, you eat well, that you 
exercise 20 minutes a day. You know, it doesn't have to, you don't have to, you know, run a marathon. You just, just need to, to move your body because that releases serotonin and it brings up your endorphins and all the things that, that bring healing. When Josiah was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, I took it really hard and I had just gone through a divorce. And um, so I was still a little, you know, battered, you know, and then, you know, the next thing I know is my son has, uh, you know, this diagnosis and um, it was difficult and my body took a, it took a toll on my body. And so as he was healing, I was healing too from um, some autoimmune stuff. And uh, I was clear that if I didn't take care of myself, I was going to end up unavailable to these other children in my life. And that wasn't an option. And, and I also think of, you know, what would Josiah want for me? And I, and I say that in all honesty, like, what would our children want for us? Well, they were beings of love and light and and healing, you know, whether they were in the healing arts or not. I mean, these, our children are just, they're just, they're everything. And our children want us to be well. And, I, and Josiah was very much, he saw how hard, you know, like I strive to be there for my children and, and to be there for him. And, and he would tell me, go, mom, go. Like, if you want to move, move, if you want to go on a, you know, do what I want you to do what you want to do. And he, but, so I was lucky enough to hear that with my ears, you know, as he was um, getting older, that he didn't want what he was going through to uh, stifle me. And he, and he, he was aware that, you know, our kids know us, you know, they, they know when we're worried or that we don't like something or, you know, they know us. And so um, I think it's just, it's that, you know, it's just, it's just making sure that you take care of yourself. You, you do look into, for me, you know, like my, uh, it's very important to me to have a spiritual connection to him. Um, and so I talk to him, I uh, commune with him. I, um, gosh, I, I, there's probably a hundred things I do that I, on a daily basis that I don't even realize I do. Um, uh, I do, uh, like I said, I like, I like some one-on-one -on -one conversations, you know, especially with other mothers. And so I offer that to the mothers that, you know, want to communicate with me, you know, also. Yes. And um, so I just think it's really important. I think that there's no right, there's no wrong. Um, I do, do I wish that I could, uh, you know, drink myself into a stupor or, you know, do do something, you know, really, you know, destructive, you know, like break all the mirrors in the house and, you know, yeah, of course, but that's not, that's not going to serve me in the long run. And so that's not, like, you know, we all have that where we just like think, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I can't do it anymore, you know, but I think if you're chosen <laughs> to, to live this life and, you know, you have a phenomenal, um, constitution because it's a tough one you know like yeah and um Josiah has shown me um I I ended up after I wrote the book um I made an oracle deck because I had there's an I don't know if you know what an oracle deck is but it's a deck of cards that um just have messages on them and these messages that I was getting from this other deck were really uh, meaningful every time I would uh just like shuffle it, something would come out. And I'm, I would be literally, I'd be saying something to him and it, the answer would come out. And I ended up making uh, my own for, for him and um, and for some of, some of the stuff that he had shown me in the book. And one of the messages that came through was, you know, share your story because someone needs to hear your heart song. That's and true. we really need one another and you know so if isolating is probably the one thing we want to do the most and I think it's necessary because I there are times I need to be alone with my own self whether it's whether I don't do anything you know like literally whether I'm scrolling Facebook you know like whether I just need a minute to myself 
And I think it's really important that we take that time for ourselves. But I think community and being with each other, um, what like what you're doing is so amazing because you're giving people information that helps them heal. And and that's so important, you know, that Thank we you. I thought yeah. so. I wanted yeah. I wanted real people to tell their real experiences because there's a lot of just information out there, but I I was always left wanting. You know, I wanted to know what other people really did experience. Yeah. It, it It's true. I mean, I and I, I get what you're saying, because there is a lot of uh, I don't know what the right word is, but like I'm not here. I have no one. There's there's no agenda because I wrote a book. Like, I didn't have a, you know, a lot of people write That's a book right. because it's their business and stuff. Right. And I do do oracle readings and I do I will do readings. You know, I do intuitive. Uh, talk therapy is what I call it to help people to process through their stuff. And, but to the moms, I'm not, I'm going to charge them like 40 bucks, you know, like $44, you know, like, it's not like, no, like there's no agenda here. This was just my heart. And if what I went through helps you, if my words, one of the things a lot of people will say to me is Rainy, you said it, well, I couldn't say it. Like I couldn't articulate it. And you said it right. When you hear someone else say what you feel, when you can relate to somebody else and you're like, I'm not alone because it's lonely out there. You know, we we are born alone. We leave alone. It's a lonely world. It can be very lonely. And but we heal together and we journey this journey. We journey together. And so that's that's what's really important that we that we connect like that. So, um, and I'm not real aggressive at it, you know, like as far as like trying to grab everybody and like, everybody's going to connect with me, you know, like, no, like I, because again, I'm healing too. So there's times where I don't want to do anything just like you, just like everybody else. And, um, I think it's the allowing the biggest word of healing is allowing Mm-hmm. And I, I remember a mom coming to me one time and saying, I feel like I've gone like 10 steps backwards because, you know, I had such a bad day and I cried and, well, and I'm like, whoa, there's it's no okay. backwards and forwards. It's okay. <laughs> backwards and forwards here. It is just, it is what it is. It, it mm-hmm. We are where we are. This, this, this is our thing. And, and, you know, all those words of what well, you got to get into acceptance, you get, no, it's just, I mean, yes, of, I don't know. It's all, there's some quandaries of all that stuff. You know, I don't, I don't like any, um, I guess I'm a little bit of a rebel. Like, I don't like all that. Like, oh no, I completely yeah. agree. I don't. Well, you one know. of my big things was when Angela was killed, you know, I was reading the, uh, steps of, um, you know, denial and all of that. Right. And at the end it says acceptance. And I always say that those, uh, stages of grief were originally developed for the person who was dying. Okay. Mm-hmm. They weren't developed for the bereaved. And maybe one day we'll all get together and we'll come up with better words. But for the time being, uh, accepting the fact that she was murdered at the age of 11 will never work for me. Right. Now, I said to somebody one time, I can acknowledge, I can use the word acknowledge you know, that that happened, but will I ever accept it? Hell no. (laughs) That's craziness. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy talk right there. Yeah. I don't, you know, unfortunately there's no language, like there's really just no words. And, and, you know, a lot of people say to me, I just, there's just no words. I'm like, I know, because there's not, there's just no words. And um, we try to articulate information, but it's, you know, that it's, It's just a place of, this is where I am today. And Mm -hmm. today I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, tomorrow, you know, I might hear a song or see his favorite food and I might be what I call back at day one. Cause sometimes you just, your foot's kind of, you know, there's kind of before, (laughs) there's before Josiah and then, you know, after, you know, like, cause there's that different there's a different rate and, and, and we're not the same. And, and when I say and polish you the pain, 
is that, you know, each time something happens, whether a new baby's born or a, a you know, uh, and you meet a new friend that shared birthdays and, and stories and all that stuff, there's healing. There's liquid gold, that Japanese um, thing where they break the glass and when they glue it back together, they glue it with gold. And that makes in their eyes, it's more beautiful because now it has these gold lines through it. And that's how I see our hearts as, you know, liquid gold. When I, when I get to hold a grandkid, there's liquid gold going through and it, and it's healing. When I see a sign, when I, you know, now different things and my heart does not look the same. It looks very, very different. And now it's, it's like repurposed, like what mattered to me prior, what I thought was important. Yes. I, I don't care. Yes. I just, it's true. I just don't care. <laughs> like I don't, I am not in control. I I mean, there's a lot of things where you're just like, I mean, it doesn't mean you don't get upset about things or, you know, but some things like I have very little tolerance, um, very little tolerance. That's my really my big are, word. You know, I don't you know, have little, tolerance for the yeah. nonsense. Yeah. But then you, it's like, it's like, yeah, I, it's, I'm not a very, I've never been, you can know, ask some of my little high school friends, but I've never <laughs> been surfaced, you know, like she's not a surface perfect, you know, like I'm just not, I want to be, I pray, like, can I just be surface? Like, can I just be superficial? Like, yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, it's so um, easy. It's no, yeah. Like, but you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it just, it is, you know, and it's, it's hard and it, it sucks. And, and then all the cuss words that you can put in there and, you know, all the <laughs> words that you, you know, it's all of it. And, yeah. and I, and I just, it, it kills me to read some stories that people have gone through and, the multiple times they've had to go through it too. And um, I just, I wish that we, this virtual thing there, I could actually touch somebody and hug them and just hold them and just let them know you're not alone. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm another piece of this beautiful tapestry that we are yes. woven together because of this, you know, because of this. So yeah. Wow. This is wonderful. Would you show would you show us your book? Yes. So uh, I got a peacock feather in there. <laughs> <laughs> um because of Josiah. Aww. That's wonderful. The sacred, yeah. The sacred alchemy of a mother's unending bond with her spirit, with his with her bond in in spirit. Can we talk? <laughs> it's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, it's it it's really yeah, it's actually the the cover. I wanted that picture and the my publisher sent her a guy from Bosnia who doesn't read the books or anything. Um but you you put out a thing of what you think you want and I I don't even know what I wrote. And um he didn't he doesn't look at it first. He just makes the cover and then she sent it back to me and I went, "Oh, okay, that's it." He's magical. Like, <laughs> I don't want to see anything else. She sent me the, what I thought I wanted. I was like, I don't know myself. Like, this is perfect. Oh, <laughs> so, that's great. Yeah, it's really sweet. And then let me show you the cards. Um, so <laughs> they're made, if you can see, with Josiah's um, tree. His tree and the surwell around it. And the front are of Josiah's. He was a woodworker. So these are some mandalas um, that he, that's the Merkaba. There's four of them. Hang on. This one I actually have in my home. Well, that's beautiful. And then this one I have in my home. Wow. So there's 11 of each of those mandalas, 11. So there's 44 cards and um, they're all messages. Um, I'll pull a couple. I'll pull you one. Okay. <laughs> You're getting it. I am, huh? Okay, like it flew out, came right here. And that says, I am here. I have not gone anywhere. Oh, wow. That's so great. 
I'll pull like three. <laughs> you get a whole story. Sometimes I'll pull four and then I put them together. And then there's a, there's a story. I love you. That's wonderful. And you are amazing. Share your story. Someone needs to hear your heart song. Oh my goodness. Isn't that appropriate, huh, Raina? <laughs> I'm just going to cry right now. I know. I'm my eyes are getting weepy. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really beautiful. And if you read the book and you um, have the cards, um, you'll you'll go like, oh, that I remember that in the story of the cards, you know, some of the things that that were said. Um, the cards are only I, I have the cards. And um, so I you can only get them from me. And they're um, and I can only well, I can send them to you out of state. I mean, out of the country. But the shipping for you is going to be insane because. Oh, it's of, OK. Once one of my. Back. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, one of the um, if somebody else wanted them in the U.S., it, they're twenty two dollars, including shipping. And um, but then so then if. If somebody lives, like I had a one gal in Canada and I went down there and I go, your shipping's like $20. And she goes, it's okay. So she gave me the whole thing for it. It was really sweet. But, huh. um, and then the book you can get on Amazon um, or, and my website will take you straight to it. So, and I will put all of those links in the show notes. You could send that to me. And okay. so everyone can find you. I want to thank you so much um, for taking the thank time you. today. It's just amazing how you've heard from him. And the best part is you can share it now with everyone. That's the I best. I try to. Yes, I try to. <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you. I'm thank so grateful. 